Hey everybody, Eric Chesson, founder of Autism Fitness, and in this edition of Into My Coaching Mind, I'm going to take you through an assessment session with one of my athletes. Now, an assessment session can be overwhelming sometimes for the athlete and even for the coach as well, which is why I say always, always, always take video when you can so you can go back and look at what has actually happened, what transpired. We can look at the A, B, C, the antecedent behavior consequence, what went on, and of course, looking at the movement pattern breakdown too. There's always going to be stuff that we miss when we're running a session for the first time, because we're starting to learn about that athlete. They're starting to learn about us. They're just getting used to the environment. So there's a lot going on and there's certainly a heightened anxiety level for just about everybody involved, even myself. So I take video so I can go back and look at what's gone on. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and take you through this, um, this assessment video. What I love about going back and reviewing an assessment video is I can pick up on some of the most um, some of the most minute but important aspects of not only behavior but movement itself. So that I'm better prepared to develop a program for any particular athlete. In, in this case, uh, this young man. So we're going to start it off here, um, and what I'm going to do is demonstrate what's going on, or I'm gonna talk about what's going on here. So I've already demonstrated the cone touches for this guy, and he's gonna come on back. So he's absolutely adept. I'm gonna pause it here. He's absolutely adept at motor imitation. You can see on those cone touches that he's getting really low. Um, he has both hip and knee flexion. It's looking pretty good to start with. That's of course not always the case, which is why we have our standard that we're looking for in each exercise. And we always have to know how to, um, how to modify it for, for a particular um, movement compensation, or if we see something else going on. And of course, following that pack profile approach, it can be physical, adaptive, or cognitive. So let's move on here. So now we're going to start off with some hurdle steps. And you notice I'm following, and this is something that we go over in the level one certification, we're always following the label demonstrate, do, and cue approach. So I'm labeling the exercise, I'm demonstrating it for the athlete, and then I'm allowing him or enabling him or giving him the opportunity, whichever those one of those you want to choose, to participate. So here you see he's taking a really, I'm going to pause it again right after this, he's taking a really big step. Now, Hip flexion here is pretty good. And you can see, so some of the nuanced stuff that I'm gonna pick out during my session, is he hiking his shoulders a little bit? Yes, is it taking away or is it really detrimental to the movement pattern right now? No, so it's something that we can look at shaping later on. But overall, this is looking pretty good, especially given this is his first or second time doing this exercise. So now we're gonna come back to the cones and you can notice here again, label, so I'm labeling it verbally, the cone touch. So I'm saying, let's try cone touches and then demonstrating it for the athlete. So I'm going to actually do that exercise. I'm gonna do the cone touch so that he knows what the expectation for performance of this exercise is. So we have label, naming the exercise, demonstrating it, actually doing it and then allowing him to participate so that we can figure out what's going on. Does he have that, that mastery standard or do we need to modify it somehow? And this is the only way to figure it out. So what's interesting here is he skips, you'll notice, I'm gonna go back a little bit here. So he skips those two cones and now he's just passing by and squatting. This is fascinating because if we were to just put on paper, or we were to write down, oh, he's not able to do it. That does not give us the entire story here at all. So 
it's more about his motor imitation skills and also his motor imitation skills in this particular moment. And that's why when we are running a pack profile assessment, if it's possible, I like to do as many sets um, as we can. And usually sometimes this comes down to a, a physical issue where the athlete starts to fatigue a little bit. Usually it's adaptive where the athlete's patience has run out. They're, they're really anxious um, during the first session. So I proceed with caution and I want to make this the best possible experience for any athlete. At the same time, if I can get in two or three or better yet four uh, sets of each exercise, it really gives me an idea of what this athlete is truly capable of. And I will tell you that the first set of anything is never going to give you uh, a definitive and it's never going to give you a, uh, a good or, or great idea of how that athlete is, is able to perform that exercise. So we don't wanna write this off and say, oh, he's not able to do it, or he, he squats instead of stand, instead of stand, uh, touching the cones. Instead, I can say, all right, well, if I'm doing this again with him, let's see if I can modify it, or let's see if I can demonstrate so that he's able to get it this time. And that's what I'm doing right here. So rather than say, oh, you're getting it wrong or not that way. Or, you know, we, we, we always want to encourage and never discourage the athlete. So we'll just go with, let's try this. And then I'll demonstrate. I, I, I go with that process again, the label demonstrating, doing, and cueing. So that's labeling and demonstrating here. And now little back step, mirror prompt. Now he's got it. So you see how quickly we can clear some of these things up when we just take time and we just take the appropriate measures to give the athlete what they need physically, adaptively, and cognitively. And this is just the second set that we're doing here. We have plenty of time. If the athlete is sufficiently motivated, we are going to have plenty of time and plenty of sessions to shape this up into a really great motor pattern. What we wanna do right now is share it with the athlete and make sure that they understand the expectation and that they are highly reinforced for participating. So here, it's clear that he can step higher. So this is something that transpires not regularly during an assessment session, but you see he even, <clears throat> what's great about this is he's, he, he's self-correcting really, really well here. He's not actually walking backwards. I'm going backwards in the video. So you saw during that first step back here, He's really stepping high over those hurdles. And now we take it over to the second set and it's much more clear to him what the expectation is. He doesn't have to bring his knees all the way up, all right? That looks like a much better step it's, it, it, in as much as it is far more controlled. It looks like he's much more stable and he's not, you notice the shoulders here, and these are all the little things that you know we we may that may pass us by during the in vivo session, which is why we take video because even I'm going to miss something like this, right? Now the shoulders are down, so not as much compensation when he's going through that hurdle step. Here's what I'm doing now: I am able to progress this hurdle step because I know that he can step over a taller hurdle. So rather than change out all of the hurdles, we just change out the last one here. And let's see what happens when he steps over this last one. So now you've got short, 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 and a tall hurdle. And that's pretty good. That's pretty good. There are still some things we can pick out there, but for the fact that this is his second or third set, that looks really, really good. All right, I'm gonna finish it up here. And of course, 
he has earned his break. He's going to hang out on the uh, on the box there. So a couple things to note. Number one, when you are running a uh, an assessment session, particularly a pack profile assessment, because that's what we use in uh, in the autism fitness curriculum. It works best when you follow the label, demo, do, and cue approach. Thing number two is that we always want to provide multiple opportunities to be successful. So you want to do more than one set. It's not just a one set and this is every, it, this tells us everything about an athlete's performance because it doesn't. We want to do multiple sets because almost guaranteed every time that movement pattern is going to look better and better. And finally, thing number three, is that when we go back and are able to observe video, it's going to tell us a lot more than we observe in, in, in the actual uh, assessment session the first time because there's so much going on. We want to build a rapport with that athlete. We want to make sure that they um, are, are experiencing as low anxiety as possible, that the environment um, and ourselves are as reinforcing as possible. And later on, we can come back and and review the video and say, oh, okay, I see this, I see this, I see this. So next time I may progress it or more likely I may modify it and I know how I'm going to modify it. So that is a, a little overview of uh, a pack profile assessment that I've run recently and what I'm going to do from there. So in the next session, I am going to start out with four low hurdles and then a taller hurdle. And then I may gradually make that second to last hurdle taller. And those cone touches, I'm going to gradually fade myself back so that he can be as independent as possible. So the key here is I have a plan. And if you want to develop a plan, if you want to become the uh, the best of the best uh, in delivering fitness and adapted PE programs to the autism and neuroadaptive population, become an autism fitness level one certified pro. You can go to autismfitness.com, register right now, and then take a live virtual practical throughout the year. I'm Eric Chesson, founder of Autism Fitness. Thanks for watching.